Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today is a plant chore video. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I really don't know what I have to do. So again, I'm just gonna walk around and we're just gonna go through this together. And yeah, I hope y'all are ready. There has been a lot of neglect recently, um, mainly my plants and soil. I am so scared that once I water my plants and soil, there's just gonna be this huge fungus gnat <laughs> infestation. So I've been like really, really, really drying out a lot of my plants and soil, but it's definitely time guys. I do need to water them. Um, we'll start off with the plants in pond and then we'll move on to that. Um, there's gonna be some air layering, some cleaning, like all that stuff. Okay, so here we go. There are two anthuriums um, that are finally pushing out new leaves and they're my Anthurium furcatum and my Anthurium decipens. I'll show you the furcatum, but I want to save the decipens for a favorites video this month. <sighs> She's so pretty. So this is the furcatum leaf, guys. So still a baby, but I mean, I don't even remember the last time this plant pushed out a new leaf. And then next to it here is the decipens. So like I said, I'm not gonna show you the new leaf. Um, she's gorgeous though. But you could see that both of the pots are on the drier side. Again, they're in self-watering pots. So I'm just using my pump here. And yeah, just plain water. I usually do a, a diluted nutrient solution, but I'm finding that it's a little bit too strong. So I've been kind of spacing out the fertilization of these plants to like monthly instead of um, every two weeks. Okay, also guys, this is the Anthurium ecuadorensis. Remember when like I was so confused about this leaf shape and with this wide sinus here because the leaves used to look like this. I thought they were just gonna be like long leafed anthuriums. The newest leaf, again, has that same pattern and it's sad because I don't know if y'all could see but the grow light damaged it up here but it's looking the same as the previous one but it looks like it's an epiphytic anthurium I don't know if that's a thing because it's just growing upwards and you could see these adventitious roots right here and then if we continue up there's a new there's probably going to be adventitious roots here do I put it on a hole is that a thing she's pretty dry so i'm just gonna water her so again i'm just waiting for the uh, meter to reach the halfway point also big news guys <laughs> okay so this was the philodendron billetia oh my gosh look at this leaf oh my god there's gonna be a new leaf guys oh my gosh i was so excited i was worried because i i put way too much water in here um and i was just afraid that it was gonna rot but i guess it liked it because now there's a new leaf so i'm gonna put more water okay we need to talk up uh oh 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 <laughs> I'll deal with you later. We need to talk about, they're so pretty guys. We need to talk about these philodendron strawberry shake propagations. So these are the mother leaves of both of the cuttings. They have like, they're like, they're like an actual plant now. Look at this leaf. You kidding. Oh my gosh. And then the other one, you can't really see the variation, but like, whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay. So she's dry. She's dry. <sighs> guys I don't know what to do with this she is so pretty um, that's the leaf before that but again neglect so she feels okay honestly philodendron hybrids they're so resilient splendid glorious majestic so tolerant of like drying out because like look at what it's doing <laughs> and look how dry it is so dry she's actually more sad than I thought I don't know if you could see her just lying on the ground. She's so dehydrated. So I'm scared of like watering it, the roots rotting. So I put a taller stake here and I'm just going to air layer just so, you know, just in case the plant, if the plant rots, I will have 
some cuttings. Okay, so we're just gonna air layer at two points, air layering at the these aerial roots, and then the one that's the newest leaf up here. Okay, so again, we're using the Ziploc method, so I'm just gonna cut the other side of it. I'm just gonna thread it through plant and the stake, and I'm just putting some plant tape and securing it to the plank. I mean, I keep saying plank, the pole. I'm, it's on a pole. Steak, oh my gosh, I'm tired. I'm doing this, a lot of people ask why I do this because obviously I have no room. Um, but things happen where like, you know, something happens to your plant. Um, if the plant is air layered and has another root system, then you could easily propagate it and the plant won't go through shock. So that's a reason why I like to do this, regardless if, you know, I'm chopping up the plant. And it just gives you that option if you want to propagate a plant. Okay, we're just doing up the uh, Ziploc here. And then just putting the plant tape like that. Okay, and now we're doing the top one here. So same thing, Ziploc, I'm gonna cut the bottom. I'm just threading it through. I'm like destroying this leaf. Oh my God, this is so annoying. No. Okay, securing the bag at the bottom, and then some moss, and then just securing it with plant tape. Okay, so here it is. I can't get over this leaf. She is so pretty, oh my gosh. I just saw this right now, guys. I kind of was over my queen anthurium, <laughs> my anthurium wear queen. Um, I'm so mean to her, but I put her in the back of my plant shelf here. And I'm realizing that she has a flower. Oh my God, did y'all hear that? Something cracked. Okay, so she looks awful. So I didn't realize this and I'm annoyed because there's a new leaf here. I don't know what's going on with it, but I'm kind of annoyed because a flower is taking up all the nutrients. And guys, right now I have no interest in pollinating anthuriums or anything. <laughs> There we go. Oh, guys, man oh man. In my experience, Monsteras, in this case, <laughs> this Monstera Thai constellation. Oh Lord, look how dry you are. They're generally drought tolerant, not drought tolerant, but they could take an underwatering. I don't know when's the last time I watered her. I'm pretty sure it was maybe a month ago. Oh my God, look at this. Look at these Jose Bonos. So sad, okay, let me bring this to the sink. This leaf looks really interesting, guys. So again, another Monster Thai Constellation propagation. Look how spotty it is. Like, this is extremely, you know, speckly. Because obviously Thai Constellations are supposed to look like this, but do you know what I mean? Like, is this like a mutation? Okay, so I'll bring these to the sink. Oh, Anthurium Regal. She does have a new leaf and I'm only seeing this now. I don't know if it was facing the grow light. The stem is so thick, guys. Or the petiole, sorry. Compared to the one before. But yeah, she is dry. So as you can see, <laughs> the anthuriums I have the hardest time with, I really just like have no time for them. Um, I really don't have room for like one of those Ikea greenhouse cabinet things. Ugh, how is there fungus net here? Die. If there's moss on top of the pond, the fungus nets just live in the moss and it's just so frustrating because like you would think that having plants in pond would minimize the fungus net situation. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I have no room for an Ike Ikea greenhouse. Okay, <laughs> it's exciting there's a new leaf though. Um, right over here. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna try not to touch her. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 the leaf, oh no. I broke an anthurium leaf, guys. Oh, oh no, oh, and you are dehydrated. Oh, I hate this. I could, you know when you rip a leaf and you could smell the plant more? Oh no, you're so, oh no, oh no. Okay, Anthuria chrysalinum crossed with, with Magnificum. So this is the leaf that I just ripped. Oh, you would have been so pretty. And so the rip is over here. <laughs> Ooh, the pot's really light, guys. Ooh, what is this leaf doing? What are you doing? And also, what are these things on your leaf? 
is this leaf doing? It's so crumply. Okay, well, she looks okay. Um, she just she just needs to be watered. Okay, so I guess I'll head to the sink and then we'll water the plants in soil. Is this a mutation? What is happening? It's so it's like almost too like speckly, right? Am I crazy? I'm actually very scared for this one because I mean you could see in the leaves super dry. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have my elbow, which is probably the slowest <laughs> ever. Um, there was a growth point, but it looks to me that it dried out completely. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this, but we'll water her now. And then some sad <laughs> Philodendron Jose Bonos. Okay, cute. Um, I just realized my camera is overheating. So I'm just gonna water the rest of my Jose Bonos and then I will join you guys in the next chore. Hey guys, so I bought some plants. Um, I was trying not to, but you know, I can't be trusted when there's like so many plant sales. So I bought some plants. I bought four from Crystal Star Nursery. Oh, they are great guys. Um, there's one orchid and I think three Hoyas. This was delivered by Carla from Plant Runs. Love y'all again. And yeah, um, it's been, I think I got this on Tuesday. When, it was Wednesday. So it's been three days. I haven't looked inside. I've, I saw the orchid, but oh, I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. Okay, I guess we'll start with the orchid because I could, I'm looking at it right now. Shut up, shut up. Oh my God, you are the cutest little thing. I oh my God, you're so cute. Look at these tiny little flowers, guys. This is the Phalaenopsis mini mark. Okay, I've wanted this plant for so long and y'all know I don't have room, but I actually gave an orchid to my mom so I could make room for this orchid. <laughs> I'm so obsessed the dots and then the orange like tongue situation so cute there's two spikes i heard that this is easy to flower correct me if i'm wrong but wow you're so cute look at you okay so the roots look great and y'all know that i like growing orchids in sphagnum moss i have a few that have done so well um i might mix in some bark some perlite uh when i repot this so when the blooms fall but for now, I could just like enjoy. Like there's so many flowers, guys. Oh, oh. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, okay, where do I put you? Okay, I don't know what I'm reaching for. Okay, yes ma'am. Okay, this is the Hoya Labii Orange. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I have the Hoya Labii Black Flowers and I'll put some pictures here um really like rapid grower it started out as like a single thingy and then all of a sudden it just branched out all over the place growth pattern very similar to the hoya polynura but oh my gosh i am i'm going to propagate this like right away like i could make three four plants <gasps> exciting okay so again they ship the majority of their stuff in sphagnum moss and the roots look great i don't know if y'all could see but they look fantastic, guys. Okay, second plant, Hoya Labii Orange. Okay, I already see one. I'm very excited about this one, guys, because I didn't know it existed. <sighs> so, this is the Hoya Australis Alexandra, right? Yeah, what? Okay, so I didn't know this ever existed. Obviously, you guys know that I have the Australis Lisa, and I'll pop in a picture. Looks very similar when it comes to like variegation. It has that yellow, green kind of situation. I actually don't know how this one's gonna grow. From what I've seen in pictures, uh, it looks more of a yellow and green plant 
as opposed to the like red sunstressing. I bought this plant mainly because I want to see it mature. I want to see it grow. I don't know. I just didn't know this plant existed and y'all know how much I love my Australis Lisa. So here is the Alexandra. Last one. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I'm so happy. Okay. Poya Bella Anka Bui. So this is the Bella, the variegated Bella with the outer variegation. So I bought this because my Hoya Bella Lida Bui Oh, with the inner variegation, it is pushing out new growth points everywhere. And yeah, anyways, if I haven't shown a picture yet, here's a picture. She is so gorgeous. So I was like, I need the one. I need the other one that's, you know, the same, but like different. Oh, you're so cute. Oh my God, how are you? Okay, so what I'm going to do next, and this is what I do when I get, you know, new plants, I use, I know there's stronger stuff out there, but I kind of have a thing where I don't want to, um, you know, have the extranesses. I've just been traumatized by neem oil in the past. Um, I know there's the end all version of this, but I just use the one, the Safer's brand with the, it's just the soap, but it's a concentrated, you know, jug here. You have to dilute it in some water. I have this spray bottle here that I got from Amazon. And yeah, I'm just gonna treat my plants. I don't want to spray the flowers guys so I think I'm just gonna spray the leaves for this one. Oh okay I sprayed the flowers it's too late. <laughs> so it's hard with orchids when they're in spike because the flowers are more delicate but the key to getting rid of pests make sure you saturate the plant because bugs can hide in all the nooks and crannies so the flowers might drop but i'd rather the flowers drop than some pests um so yeah we're gonna continue this is the low bi oops and i've said this before but this insecticidal soap doesn't kill the eggs um i think the end all does so i like to do repeated treatments every two to three days uh times three Basically in three days or two days, I'm going to treat it again and then the same a third time. And then I'll isolate them, monitor them, see if there's any bugs crawling and then I feel safe introducing them into my main plant room. And um, I'm actually also going to treat <laughs> Oh my god, it's so sad. This um, oh yeah, what's the name? Macrophylla? No, it's the latifolia, right? Anyways, y'all know what this one is. So um, everyone was commenting that it might be mites. And I know a lot of people are saying that you treat that with sulfur. Um, for now, I'm just going to use this insectocidal soap and then isolate it. It's It's been isolated for a little bit. So yeah, I usually... Fungus nap yes okay so you so you usually keep um these plants isolated not in my plant room um sometimes they're like against the wind my west facing window in my kitchen then i just do the repeated treatments i monitor them for a little bit and then i introduce them into my collection i i have to treat a few more plants that i got um they're kind of like secret plants that i don't want to reveal yet um i'm probably honestly I'm probably going to reveal them in three months. <laughs> I just want to do one of those videos where I do, where I kind of show the progress of the growth and like me getting a plant and then the process of like transferring it or whatever. So I'm going to do that now, but I will join you guys in the next clip. Oh, hey guys. Um, oh, ooh, I look pretty rough. I am editing a video right now. It is, what time is it? 2.25 in the morning. Um, so this is, I, I don't think I've, talked about this a lot. I am a morning person. I usually wake up at either three or four in the morning on the weekends to edit a video. And it usually takes me like the whole process of editing, importing footage, exporting, uploading, making a thumbnail. It usually takes four hours, sometimes five if it's like a really long video. And if like I'm really like particular about the editing style 
but um yeah thankfully i have two screens here and yeah i just started i just opened everything i really just couldn't sleep last night the video that i'm editing um is the plants that i'm struggling video y'all have seen it already but um yeah there's me so i don't know how long the video is going to be when i upload it but there's like an hour yeah there's like an hour and five minutes of footage i usually cut that in half or like i usually cut out all the awkward pauses because i'm awkward i'm just gonna like chill and edit i'm actually happy because now by the time i'm finishing editing it's gonna be 6 30 in the morning and then i'll have time um on a sunday morning to do like other things i don't know I don't know if I'm going to show you some footage of me editing. I have no idea. Wow. I don't think I've showed you guys my glasses. I wear glasses, by the way. So the majority of the time you see me, I'm in contact. This is funny. <laughs> again so 620 that makes it that's four hours okay so it's funny because i think i had an hour and five minutes of footage that was cut down to 18 minutes and 46 seconds and yeah i'm just exporting it right now then i gotta upload it schedule it make a thumbnail i really like um letting you guys choose the thumbnail in my instagram stories um it's always well the past two have been very close so we'll see with this one so i might take a quick nap after this is done and then maybe i'll continue with the plant chores oh hey guys so side note i finished my this at home training i need to do for work and i'm on vacation yay <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am so happy. We're gonna continue with the plant chores. We're also in that time of the year where it starts to get really hot in here. And it's about time, guys, because in the winter, this room actually gets really cold just because half of it is essentially window. So I don't know if you could see here. The temperature is 77.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit and 62% humidity. So yeah, I think the main thing is watering. A lot of these plants are dry. I already see one. It's a Syngonium Aurea, y'all. This is my Syngonium Aurea. Oh my gosh. I think for now I'm gonna take some plant tape and give it a hug. And then perhaps just give it a little bit of water. <laughs> Look at this. Get up. Oh my God, it's sticking. Oh. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my God, I'm stuck. This is happening. There's pun everywhere. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, let me put this down. I just spilled more of it. <laughs> what ha happened? What ha happened? I think the dustpan is the best thing to do. But yeah. What is that for? I made a banana bread. I forgot, guys, I made a banana bread. Do you want to see it? This is so chaotic. <laughs> Look. So I actually took this out 15 minutes prior and it was still wet in the middle so let me just check again okay it's clean i think we're okay ah look guys okay would you guys watch a lifestyle channel by me i'm kidding no i would i don't think i would do that anytime soon plus my life's pretty boring let's be honest and i'm just gonna let it cool guys how excited oh. <laughs> so dustpan dyson oh So I'm wearing glasses again. Um, I actually just woke up from a nap. I don't take naps. I like hate naps with a passion, but sometimes your body just tells you you gotta take a nap. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna end this video with watering a lot of my plants that need to be watered. There's a lot, there's a lot that are real dry. So I'm just gonna fill up my water tank pump situation. We're just gonna take a look together. I just finished watching. Oh. 
Hi, Gorge. Oh my God. She is stunning, guys. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with wild fern. Where'd she go? I'm gonna fill up this um, water pump situation. So I'm just filling up the pump with uh, new water. And I'll just take a look at these plants over here. I've already looked at a few. Um, it's probably my most neglected uh, plant corner. Sorry if this video is boring, but honestly, the chore right now is just watering all these plants. Anthurium esmeraldans, guys. Super dry right now in pond. Definitely do for repot, guys, to be honest. Okay, this is my Alocasia golden bone. The one that started out as corms, and she's pretty leggy just because I initially had her like not too close to the window or a grow light so see there's a leaf that i need to get rid of okay say goodbye to this leaf here so yeah i feel like if i were to do this over i would have this alocasia um under a grow light because she's getting way like can you all see guys this orchid is just stunting um this is the philonopsis mid to diamond panda so she has since opened more flowers and it's just so stunning. Oh, wow. Look at this flower. And then these ones are still fine. Um, so I think after these drop, I'm probably going to transfer it into new um, sphagnum moss. Uh, she's dry. So for now, I'm going to do that strategy where, when I'm, where I'm kind of pressed for time. I'm just going to put it in the saucer here. And then because the moss is really dry right now, it's just going to soak it up. Oh, dear. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, she's really dry. This is my Syngonia mojito. Uh, this is um, all propagations. So at the bottom, lots of uh, dead leaves and definitely dehydrated. I have this plant in a pond substitute. And moving forward, I don't think I'm going to use this uh, substrate in the future just because in my experience, it dries out too much. So for like a Syngonium, I don't think I'll do that again. Some Hoyas that like to be kept on the drier side, uh, they can handle it. Okay, so back up against the window, you go. Okay, y'all, so one of my other orchids that's in bloom, my Phalaenopsis GW Green World Snakeskin. So she has just bloomed so much guys still in that small little pot she's dry what i usually do i usually take my nutrient solution this is heavy on the flora bloom and i just kind of soak the moss and she's in like a cash pro here so i just leave a little bit in the cash pro just so it could soak it up because trying to rehydrate super dry moss is a challenge <laughs> Oh my god, this almost fell on me. Oh, we're at it, guys. This is my gigantic Philodendron Glorious. She has roots for days, and right now she's dry. I'm just gonna add some nutrient solution to the soil. Okay, so right now I'm trying to look to see if there's any new growth on this Philodendron Bellietti propagation. I don't see any, but again, she's super dry. She's up against the window. Okay, this is hanging forever. Um, a side note, I made um, cupcakes because I'm actually going out today um, to see one of my um, close friends, Alan and, and Mark. Love these guys to bits, um, but I made uh, chocolate Nutella cupcakes. So I'll pop in a picture here. It's a chocolate cupcake. It's cored out, so there's some um, Nutella drizzle in the middle of the cupcake, and then it's a Nutella buttercream with a Nutella um, drizzle on top. You know, guys, I don't know. Ooh, you are dry. Okay, um, this is the Hoya Lacunosa Super Silver. Um, I think a few months ago I showed you guys that she had a little bit of rot. Um, I have since propagated her, put her in some pond in this container. I could pro probably put her into a new pot, um, but I just haven't had the time. She's dry, so let me just put some nutrient solution just because I know this plant has been in here for a while. Um, and the nutrients like in it, they're probably gone. So there's that under grow light. Let's just talk about her for a second. Hoya multiflora. This is the SV406. If y'all want proof, 
that this plant is like super like bloom prone. I don't know if that's the right term. There's some here, there's some over here. Only two opened, but look at that guys. Shooting star realness. And then there's a bunch over there. So that's three, you can see three there. Highly recommend, super resilient plant. Um, okay y'all, I just saw something. I need your expert opinions because y'all helped me so much. What is going on here? What is that? Okay, so it's there. It's at the top of this plant here. What on earth is that? Does anyone know? I don't even want to touch it because I don't want to disturb anything, but I'm isolating this. Let's put you off to the side. <laughs> okay, update on this alocasia, Watsoniana. So that weird leaf finally died off. And so I think it's time to cut her off. Like, I mean, I still don't know if you're okay. There's some wrinkling over here. Honestly, guys, I feel like this is the true test of y'all who are like, oh, Kevin, we'll watch anything <laughs> you film. And yeah, anyways, Hoya species NS05-21. Yeah, tendrils everywhere. Super dehydrated. It is still a super resilient plant, guys. I dry out my plants a lot. And I think this transition into warmer weather has really affected them. I mean, it's all good, like more light, more warmth, uh, but the plant just uses up more water. And I don't think I've adapted, you know, how I've, the frequency in watering my plants. I'm still kind of in winter mode, even though I know it's spring, obviously it's been spring for a while. But yeah, this is a Hoya I'm super excited about because like, I swear, when you Google this, I don't, I have no idea what the blooms look like. Again, I'm using these clips here and we're just gently again, keyword gently, clamping them down. We're just gonna use up straight up nutrient solution. See, and like I, okay, so the next Hoya, I know it looks pretty similar. This is the Hoya cutest porcelana. I'm mad because I totally missed the flowers all dropped, but I know for a fact that it bloomed again. So, I'm hoping it blooms again. Cause like, again, here's a picture. They're like one of my most favorite blooms. So pretty, I'm in love with it. And yeah, again, just clamping down the tendrils. Okay, I need to know, cause this is my Hoya Curia guys. Um, Albo Marginata, I don't know. This is such a slow grower. Um, I mean, super impressive that she's like up the trellis here but oh my gosh the moment you touch these top ones here they'll die so i'm trying to be careful <laughs> putting some nutrient solution and i find that these grow better when it's drier so i don't fill up the reservoir too much Okay guys, another plant I neglect. I think this leaf got stuck. This is the Philodendron Pink Princess. These are the propagations. And yeah, I mean, we'll see <laughs> what the variegation is like. This leaf over here is what's making me keep the cutting. I'm not sure, but I think it's pushed out this leaf over here and it's just a little bit of pink up there. There's some on the back side, So there's always hope when that's the case. There's another one here though. I really like that. Every time they're speckling on the front and the back, that's a really good sign. Monster Albo. Uh, I'm just going to, as you know, I've been air layering at every single node um, and we're just going to rehydrate because I don't know if y'all can hear, but it is crispy. Uh, the top one's fine, but I think the other ones are not <laughs> oh it's so dry man i hate when it gets to the stage because it is like close and possible to hydrate the moss in an effective way i am planning to uh propagate this plant soon oh my god okay i just saw this now i don't know when this happened my hoya matilde do you see future kevin zoom in the pot is sideways and I've been waiting for this moment because sometimes when you don't fill up the reservoir too much, uh, it gets, you know, it's a thirsty plant just because the roots are so large in the laka that it just sucks it all up. And then after a week, cause I changed my nutrient solution last week, the reservoir dries out and now it's uh, 
empty. Don't worry, Matilde, I'm here to save the day. I hope. Oh my God, there's so many <laughs> leaves just like, oh my God, did you make a mess? How come I didn't hear you? You're so heavy, guys, she's so heavy. Oh, she's stuck. Oh, she's stuck. Did this just grow more? That is just, <laughs> oh, it's actually empty, guys. Okay, just for now. I'm just gonna fill up the reservoir with just plain old water. And I'm just gonna have to lie all the vineage on something because she is actually really heavy. Ooh, maybe if I push you. Do you know what? I'm putting it back. I'm putting it back where it was, guys. Okay, guys, I guess that's it. Apologies. This video, I feel like there was no focus. I feel like I lost focus. Thank you for all your ongoing support. Um, I really appreciate it. Like I said earlier, I'm on vacation. It's day two. Um, I'm off for like a week and a little bit. So um, there's a lot of things that I want to film. There's a lot of things I want to do. Obviously, I'm going to get some rest. That's very important. And we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. <gasps> Guys, that's incredible. I'm so like shocked by that. Um, I wouldn't be here if y'all didn't come back. So thanks for coming back. And thanks to everyone who's new here. I really appreciate you watching these. <laughs> These boring videos. Well, this one, I feel like this one's so boring, but it's just it's probably just in my head. I don't know, guys. So yeah, thank you guys so much. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>